Greetings, you lovely people. Welcome to Crimson Guitars. This is not the great guitar giveaway. This is the Luthiers Teardown. We have a customer who has given us this gorgeous Gibson, and uh, I'm going to be, here it is, taking it apart and having a look at it. It's the ES125 TDC in Sunburst. It's 1967, and it's in fabulous nick so we're going to be just having a quick look at it basically having a little bit of a rummage around and seeing what we got um let's get her on the operating table shall we she is exquisitely beautiful she's in extraordinarily good condition there are no bumps no scratches um all there is really is just the ravages of time on the finish but as we all know they're rather nice so we've got this gorgeous sunburst color uh, it's a maple laminate top it's an arch top obviously so it's a laminate construction but we've got maple front back and sides and then we've got a mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard everything's been stained We've got some dog ear P90s. We've got this lovely, really simple, elegant tailpiece, which is original. Got a tunematic sat on a timber block, double F holes, original scratch plate, original binding, which has gone this beautiful yellow color there. You can see, I'm pretty certain we've had a refret because look at those chunky suckers. They ain't no 60s. And the only thing that I'm a bit sad about is that the tuners are not original. These are Grover tuners and the original tuners would have been plastic, peg, clusson, no less. Now this has got two P90s. Uh, this had the original, the ES125TC, rather than the ES125TDC, only had one pickup. So the other thing that I really like about this is the customer has put flat wounds on it and it just has this wicked like really vintagey sound proper kind of double bassy <laughs> oh, i wish you could see what sophia's doing she is dancing the last thing to say about this is they're worth about four grand so i need to be really careful and not talk about with this this is this is a serious instrument. Now, I am going to level crown and polish this guy, but don't worry, I'm not going to film the whole thing. Just sexy shots. But we're also going to have a look at the pickups. Just have a little look inside it. Just go into it a little bit. But yeah, this is, this is a pretty special instrument. There was only about four and a half thousand, I think like 4,557 or something like that. Correct me on the comments, but yeah about that and the most amount of these shipped out in one year was the year of 1967 which is the year that this was shipped out so that was the most popular year for these guitars and that is the year of this particular guitar so anyway blah 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 let's stop talking let's take it apart now Sophia just pointed out how skinny the neck is let's have a look 40 mil yeah wincy Okay, I've just taken the strings off and do you want to see something adorable? So under here we have a piece of leather to keep the tailpiece off the body. Guess what it is? It is a stinky old watch strap. Isn't that sweet? I love finding all these old treasures. I want to smell, you know I like smelling things. I won't smell it. <laughs> oh yeah, lovely chubbly. Now the other thing is that, interestingly, underneath our floating bridge, we've got some holes which do correlate to the tunematic. But I thought that these just, I thought these always came on a, on a wooden bridge. So I don't know why they're there. Any ideas? Ooh. Okay, well those screws are mashed up, so let's... 
let's try these ones. Now, I've got to admit, I'm never quite sure what I expect to find underneath pickups. Ooh. <laughs> That's actually... Oh my God, I thought they're gonna fall apart. So this is cool, man. This is way cool. You can see, you can see the wind. You can see the shape of the wind and the tape around it. That's very cool, I like that. And there's an absolute butt ton of iron filings in here being magnetized. We should definitely clean them up. But that's so cool. That's so nice that you can see the, uh, the wines. I love that. And here we've got some lovely braided wiring and some really thin wires here, like, bits of hair and some stinky old tape. I love all the stinky old stuff. Now that's cool. It's cool. It's nice when you actually find something kind of intriguing. Now I must admit, I was expecting a center block in this. Obviously didn't do my reading because look, there ain't one. It's hollow. One of the wires coming out from the wind is basically the, the, the solder has just kind of like fallen off the back plate. So it's holding on by a thread. So we will solder that back on. I'm having trouble with this one. The screw is so threaded that I'm really, I'm not even sure whether we're gonna get it off, but um, I'll do my best. And if we do, we'll replace the screw because I would like to test, sorry, check the wiring at the back of that as well. Because if this one is hanging by a thread, why wouldn't the other one be? Here's the, the Perspex cover I was talking about. And inside is the wine. Okay, I've become slightly obsessed by this threaded screw. I can't leave that like that. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a nut slot file and I'm gonna try and make a new slot in there so I can take it out and throw it in the bin. So let's try against my better judgment. Might put some tape down here to protect the surface. I keep having to remind myself, full ground, full ground, full ground, full ground. Ugh, this is really scary. I don't like this. <sighs> Trouble is, if this doesn't work, it's just gonna look crap. But, I've gotta try. Ugh, let's see. Let's see. No. No, it's not worked. Okay, let's try in the original slot. Okay, this is not working at all. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill it out. Everyone's laughing at me. Everyone who comes through is like, ha ha, look what Josh has to do. It's really scary. This is gonna take ages. Okay, we're getting close now. In a minute, the thread is just gonna fall off. And what I really don't wanna do is like go kablam and go all the way through the body. So let's just see if I can not do that. Do you know what I'd really like to be able to do is just get in there and snap that screw off, but I think my hands are too fat. I wonder who's got small hands. I bet Tommy's got small hands. He likes playing Pokemon. Oh, it's spinning. Yeah. Okay. Great. <gasps> yes. Okay, there we go. 
it's off. And we've got another one of those cool Perspex pickup tops. Now, the problem is now is that we've got a thread in there and what I thought was that I'd be able to get in underneath and pull it out, but there's a bit of bracing like right there. It's into the bracing. Uh, which means I'm just going to have to draw that whole thing out, which is going to be tricky. Anyway, so this is something that you guys don't need to watch because it's boring. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm, I'm pleased to say that the drilling hell is over and uh, I have managed to replace the screw. Sam's whispering, age your screw, age your screw, which I might do, might not. Depends if I'm feeling spiteful towards Sam. Yeah, okay, so I'll do that. I'll do that for four screws. Um, let's get soldering. Okay, before I um, fully close this back up, I think I better try it. Let's see that all that solder is taken. Yep, that was scary and horrible. I didn't enjoy that one tiny bit, uh, but it's done now. So now I'm just gonna do the uh, fret work and clean this stinky old fretboard, which is totally gross. And it's got about 50 years worth of clag. But don't worry, we're not gonna make you watch it. We're just gonna do some nice music, gonna do some nice shots, and it'll all be really relaxing. And then I'll see you at the end um, when I'm gonna play it. very important to keep your nuts clean. And I like to buff my nuts with ultra mega versatile multi-use guitar polish. You might be wondering why I scraped and am oiling the fretboard now. It's because I kept on like scratching over a fret and then having to do it again. So I just thought I'd do this first. It makes sense, right? I never get bored of oiling fretboards. I'm like Bob, Bob Ross. You know how Bob Ross never gets bored of cleaning his paintbrushes? I never get bored of oiling fretboards. Okay, so this has officially had the life breathed and polished back into it. This thing's been sat on this lady's, um, like a dresser or something, top of a cupboard for years and years and years. It doesn't even have a case. I mean, it's four grand guitar in pretty amazing nick. But what I do want to do now is give it a clean because that is just the icing on the cake. It never fails to please me bringing these kind of guitars back to life. I just love it. Um, and I'm gonna clean it with our fretboard and finish cleaner um, because this stuff has no petroleum and um, no like silicon products in it. So it's safe. 
uh, but I am going to be really careful um, if you're cleaning uh, like old nitro guitars or anything that's flaking a little bit. Just be careful. But let's bring this back and then we can get it singing. And just like that, we have another ES125 TDC back in the game, off the shelf and back in the world making music again, which makes me very happy, very happy indeed. I love doing this. I love restoring these old beauties. And we do this a lot at Crimson. So if you've got anything you want, kind of bringing back to life, bring it to us. We don't just make guitars and tools and teach people how to make guitars. We restore guitars as well. So remember that and send us in your instruments because we'd love to get them back on track. Uh, let's do a little demo of this guy. Like, subscribe and uh, let us know how it's all going. Nice one guys. See you later. <laughs>